Hey, this is Robert Knighty, your Spray Foam Advisor. And I want to really thank everybody out there for paying attention, for tuning in, for checking us out, and, and really keeping interest and being invested in the information that we're sharing here at Spray Foam Advisor. And today's question comes from one of our viewers who sent in the question asking, what do we do about fireplace flues? How do we insulate around a, uh, a difficult situation such as a fireplace? And why would this be a difficult scenario? Why would this be any more difficult than any other situation. And the number one reason is that a fireplace, the fireplace flue, is considered a heat emitting device. So first and foremost, almost all spray polyurethane foams have a continuous operating temperature that's about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. That means any hot surfaces that continuously operate above that 180 degrees Fahrenheit, we need to pay attention to. The building code also says that when you're working with combustible materials, and we have to face it, spray foam insulation is a combustible material, it far exceeds the required fire protection codes, but it is a combustible material because it's made of plastic. So the code says that when we're working with any combustible material, that we need to have at least a three inch clearance from heat producing devices. So a good example of a heat producing device is going to be a fireplace. It's going to be that flue coming off of a fireplace or a chimney and the chimney flue, right? These are going to be heat producing devices. So when we're dealing with situations like this, how do we handle them? Situations like hot water pipes that are around 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit are okay. They're below our 180 degree Fahrenheit threshold and we can apply foam directly up against them. But when we're dealing with situations like chimney flues, fireplaces, steam pipes even. So steam pipes are gonna operate around 210 to 20 Fahrenheit. So we wanna make sure that we give the proper clearance in those situations. And the building code says three inches of clearance is what is required by the building code. And the right way to address that from a functionality standpoint is that we wanna typically use some type of non-combustible material in direct contact with those locations where we need to apply spray foam. So if we have a penetration, for example, through a roof, where a chimney flue or a uh, fireplace flue is exiting, we wanna make sure that we put something around it like a rock wool um, or some type of non-combustible material, insulation generally is gonna be wrapped around this heat producing location, and then we apply the spray foam up against that material. When we have penetrations through roof systems, we wanna make sure that there's some type of fire caulking that's used at those gaps so that we're actually providing the air seal, some type of you know air seal benefit at those penetrations through the assembly, whether it's a roof or a wall or any type of penetration to the outside. Air sealing, we know how important it is in the spray foam insulation industry, and we don't want to give up that benefit just because we have a limitation in the temperature that can be applied directly to the surface. So in that situation, I would highly recommend you look at a fire, fireproof caulk material, something that could withstand higher temperatures, um, work with the GC, work with other trades if necessary to make sure that there's a fireproof caulk incorporated into the package. Do it yourself. Put it into your bid system. Put it into your package. And when you run into those situations, you know, charge a couple bucks, whatever that cost may be, to, uh, to get that air seal at that location. And then wrap it with some type of fireproof insulating material and then spray foam up against that fireproof insulating material or non-combustible insulating material like a rock wool. So that's the best way to handle situations like that. Uh, this will also work for can lights. Traditional incandescent uh, can lights are often considered uh, heat producing devices, even when they're rated for insulation contact. Spray foam does such a great job of air sealing them that sometimes the heat doesn't dissipate through air movement and we can lead to heating and flickering, overheating and flickering of those can lights. We're not seeing that happen as much with LEDs in today's design society, but it is still something to pay attention to. If, if it's an old style incandescent uh, can light, we want to be careful around that. We still recommend a three inch space around those can lights um, because um, you know they're just not dissipating heat as easily when spray foam is installed over them. Most of the time this is not a problem because spray foam is used against roof lines in most situations. Can lights are typically installed on attic floors, but those of you up in the north that are doing more attic floor applications, this can be a concern. It's something you guys should pay attention to. The overall idea here is any surface over 180 degrees Fahrenheit or that's considered a heat producing device, 
The building code says we need a three inch airspace between the combustible material, the spray foam insulation, and that surface. So we highly recommend using some type of non-combustible material up against that surface and then spraying up against that non-combustible material. That gets your three inch air gap and you are compliant with the building code. This has been Robert Niney with Spray Foam Advisor. Thanks for checking us out. Catch us on some more videos. I love questions. Anyone out there, feel free to shoot in a question. I'll give you a, uh, an email address right here for any questions you have. Send them to questions at sprayfoamadvisor.com. Sprayfoamadvisorsingular.com. So questions at sprayfoamadvisor.com. Go ahead and send those questions in. I'll get to as many of them as I can, and I'll, I'll try to incorporate a select few into some of my uh, weekly videos. And, of course, uh, if you like this uh, video, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the blog if you haven't already done that. Find us on YouTube and uh, like us, uh, like and follow us there. And uh, check us out on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, find us on all of your favorite social media sites, and uh, you can keep up with the words of wisdom coming out of Spray Foam Advisor. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. We'll catch you on some more videos. Take care.